Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of The Angry Astronaut, episode four of my 100K celebration. And this time, we're going to venture away from next generation propulsion. We're going to move away from aliens. And now we're finally going to start talking about things I love to hate. And first and foremost, top of the list, is Boeing Starliner. So as many of you probably know, well, those of you who've been following my channel since I started it over three years ago, I've been slamming on Starliner the whole time because the first test run of Starliner took place when I started my channel. And of course, that was a terrible, embarrassing failure for Boeing and for NASA. And then after that, it was a comedy of errors one thing after another, causing more and more delays to this ship until it finally flew again. And even then, it wasn't entirely successful, in spite of the fact that Boeing really wanted us to believe that, and even NASA wanted us to believe that. But as has become very clear as of late, with yet another delay to Starliner's maiden launch to the ISS, that is to say the maiden launch where it'll actually be carrying people, well, now the earliest it's going to be flying is the summer, and it's not just scheduling issues, it's problems with the ship. Problems that all of us saw were starting to develop during that last orbital test. Yes, it did dock with the ISS, but it had problems, and it probably had some difficulties that we don't even know about. So I'm going to give you a complete rundown of everything that has happened with this ship over the course of the last three years. This ridiculous comedy of errors and why NASA should just pull the plug. So before we start slamming on Starliner, let's go ahead and describe this spacecraft in detail. I mean, why do we even really need it, given the fact that Crew Dragon has been doing such a good job for quite some time now? Well, one of the biggest advantages that Starliner has is the fact that it can reboost the ISS into a higher orbit in the same way that the Russian Progress resupply ship can, and also the Cygnus resupply ship. And by the way, we're almost out of those, even though in the near future we're supposed to be using Falcon 9s to carry the Cygnus to the ISS, but overall we've been completely reliant on the Russians to get the ISS out of harm's way. In addition to that, it is a bit bigger than the SpaceX Dragon 2, with 11 cubic meters of pressurized space designed for 7 passengers as opposed to only 9.3 cubic meters worth of pressurized space for the Dragon 2 but it's incapable of carrying any sort of substantial cargo, giving Dragon a big advantage there. But here's another thing. Starliner is not the most aerodynamic ship in the world. Therefore, ULA wasn't confident about launching it until they added an aerodynamic skirt modification to the Atlas V rocket. You're going to see that drop away from the Centaur booster here in just a moment. That in itself is a little worrying, and perhaps the reason why why ULA takes such a shallow trajectory over the Atlantic Ocean that will allow for an easy abort. The Dragon does not take this kind of trajectory, nor should it given how reliable its abort system is. However, it would appear that ULA is doing this either because they want to be safer or because they're not quite as confident about Starliner's ability to abort at the last moment and safely re-enter the atmosphere once it no longer has the aerodynamic skirt to help it. By the way, that is pure speculation on my part. I can't be certain of it. 
And by the way, there went that aerodynamic skirt, but another reason for concern perhaps was the fact that during the only abort test that was carried out with the Starliner, one of the three parachutes failed to deploy and the capsule landed with only two parachutes. However, NASA deemed this to be safe, which is very strange because they put the Dragon through a much more excruciating process of testing parachutes given the problems that the Dragon experienced with its system. So it's odd that NASA would regard a two parachute success as being an overall success. Nevertheless, it moved on to its first orbital flight test on December 20th, 2019 at about the same time that I released my first video. And here's where the comedy of errors really got started because this test was almost fatal on two separate occasions. The first time was a software error that caused the Starliner's engines to be fired in the wrong time and the wrong trajectory, placing the Starliner into a completely incorrect orbit. NASA noticed what was happening and tried to manually correct the problem, but then communications dropped off with the Starliner. Many problems right off the bat. Now, by the way, Nicole Mann, who was originally scheduled to fly in this thing, said that she could have corrected this manually had she be on, been on board at the time. I'm not going to second guess her there. She is a highly talented pilot, but that being the case, if she had saved the ship and taken it successfully to the ISS, she might just as well have been dead a few days later because Starliner experienced a second very significant software failure that led to a timing problem that caused the service module and the crew module to separate incorrectly and the two nearly collided. Had this happened, Starliner would have burned up in the atmosphere, killing Nicole Mann and anybody else on board. Obviously, NASA was extremely disappointed with this horrific performance and issued a list of 80 corrective actions to Boeing, most of them software-related that they would have to carry out before NASA would risk a second flight. And this took a very long time to carry out. It wasn't until until August of 2021 that Boeing regarded themselves as being prepared to carry out another test flight or so they thought. But incredibly, after a 21-month delay, well, that's when the problems really got started. Because during the August 2021 launch window, 13 propulsion system valves failed on the Starliner in its service module. This, of course, would prevent the ship from even taking off. Fortunately, they detected these problems just prior to launch and never figured out what caused them. In spite of months and months being spent trying to identify the issue and correct it, and finally Boeing gave up in December of 2021 and replaced the entire service module with a second test fly now being scheduled for May of 2022, 30 months after the first failed test flight. And finally, it did happen, thank God, or maybe not so much, on May 19th of 2022. So after 30 months worth of working on this thing, and after losing half a billion dollars worth of earnings because of all of the unexpected development costs, because keep in mind, this is a fixed price contract. It isn't like SLS, where you can spend as much money as you want and get away with it. NASA enforced the amount of money that they contracted contracted Boeing to complete this job, which by the way was about a billion dollars more than SpaceX got, but nevertheless Boeing persevered, even though in my opinion they really didn't want to after losing this much money and finally launched again. And so were all of the problems corrected? Well not just no, but hell no. Now granted, the second flight went much better than the first, however, right off the bat, there were problems. The ship had two of its orbital maneuvering and attitude control system thrusters, or OMAC thrusters, failed during the orbital insertion burn, what was able to compensate with the backup OMAC thrusters, and also some of the reaction control system thrusters, or RCS. However, the RCS thrusters, or at least two of them, also failed during the process because of low chamber pressure. 
And during an almost 24-hour period, while Starliner was attempting to dock with the ISS and experiencing problems in the process, NASA went dark, and so did Boeing, not responding to any media inquiries whatsoever. Who knows exactly how many problems transpired during this entire process, but one thing is absolutely certain. If both the OMAX thrusters and the RCS thrusters failed during this process, that indicates a problem with the entire propulsion system. Now granted, the redundancy systems kicked in and the flight was an overall success, at least as far as we know. But this is deeply concerning because Starliner had problems with its thrusters all the way through its initial testing process, not just during this flight. And even though Boeing regarded this test as being an A+, I think I'm quoting them directly here, and even though NASA regarded this test as being an unqualified success, or at least publicly that's how they were talking about it, there were many more delays to come, simply because, obviously, this flight did not go as well as was being publicly acknowledged. Delay after delay followed until, finally, a launch date was established in April of 2023 until a few days ago, that is, when NASA decided that because of scheduling issues and also system development, in other words, further and ongoing problems with the ship, which is not surprising given how well that last test went. The flight was going to be taking place perhaps sometime in May, but in my opinion, most likely won't be happening until the summer. So once again, remember just how bad this situation is. We're talking about three and a half years, no less than 40 months having already passed. As of the recording of this video, Boeing is still not prepared to send up the all-important backup ship to Crew Dragon. Thank God that SpaceX did so well with its crew-rated ship, because if both ships had encountered problems like this, Russia no doubt would have kicked us off the ISS by now, or at the very least forced us to have backed off of at least some of the sanctions being applied against Russia if we really wanted seats on board the Soyuz, and that would have applied to the Europeans as well if they wanted wanted to ride on the Soyuz. How cataclysmic that would have been if Crew Dragon had not been such a massive success. And how ironic this entire situation has proven to be, because everybody aside from SpaceX, that is, including former astronauts, former Apollo astronauts, people at NASA, everybody expected Boeing to come through and deliver a reliable crew-rated ship, and for SpaceX, the new emerging performer, to have all of the problems. And the reverse has been the case. A complete embarrassment to a company that has produced so many spectacular human-rated ships in the past for over half a century century this company has accomplished such amazing things, and now it can't get a simple crew-rated capsule into orbit, let alone to the moon. What the hell is happening with Boeing? Well, one thing is certain, NASA should stop relying on them. In my opinion, there is a very good chance that the Sierra Space Dream Chaser is going to fly before Starliner successfully carries astronauts to the ISS. If NASA were to invest the same kind kind of money in Dream Chaser that they have invested in Starliner, I'm confident that Sierra Space could get a human-rated Dream Chaser into orbit by 2025. Even with their current funding, Sierra Space is planning to have a human-rated ship fly in 2026, and with a lot of extra funding and a sense of urgency, I am almost certain that this company could come through where Boeing has failed. And also keep in mind, Dream Chaser is capable of carrying large amounts of cargo and reboosting the ISS. It's the best of both worlds, a far superior ship that should have been funded in the first place. NASA needs to correct its initial failure with commercial crew by choosing Boeing over Sierra Space, and they need to correct that problem now. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, also please hit those notification bells, because if you don't have notifications on, YouTube gets 
gets to decide which of my videos it's going to tell you about and which of my videos you don't get to watch. If you like my content and you want to see every single video, please hit those notification bells. Otherwise, YouTube is going to leave you out of the loop more often than not. And also, please check the description for various ways to keep my content coming. And as always, stay angry about space.